help Donald Trump and Kaddish Baruch Hu. Even if he was guilty of some of the things he was accused of, you should still help him just for Din Road death. Just for the way they attack him, they lie on his name, they degrade him, they demean him, they belittle him. Yo, we just finished the convention that was one million percent a success. The whole Republican Party coalesces around him. He's the nominee. Everybody's like united. The Democrats are divided. And then you listen to the way they critique his speech, yo. And it was a really good speech. But no, they're going to make it like, yo, oh, he's sleepy. Now they're calling him like Sleepy Trump. Like he's low energy, meandering, sweating, circuitous sing song. Oh, yo, 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 yo. I can't even begin to imagine that you could lie about a person the way they lie about him, yo. It's blatant lies, though. Like saying he's an anti Semite, that's a blatant lie. That's a disgusting lie. How can you even say that, yo? You become dumb when you say that. You know why? Because your anger blinds your intellect. That's what happens, yo. When you get angry, you become dumb. You should know that for sure, yo. Blinded by their rage, yo. Gonna try to murder him every second they get, yo. And then while they're murdering him, they're gonna be like, oh, but you know, he almost got shot, so we were happy he's okay. And then in the same breath, yo, yo, in the same nanosecond, but he's a threat to democracy, yo, yo, yo. That's what it is with these wicked people, yo. They don't fear God, and they're always speaking duplicitly, yo. Always two sides out of their mouth, they speak. They'll contradict themselves in the same sentence and say it with such conviction that you yourself will believe it, yo. Get out of here, yo. You got to be hip to the game, yo. These are not regular people, yo. These are people that are being led by the Satan to destroy Trump, to destroy America, to destroy Israel. Everything the Democrats do causes destruction. Open border, destruction, inflation, destruction, pushing an agenda of transgenderism, immorality, and disgustingness. Really, I could come up with a better word, but I'd rather use something so base like that to let you know how nasty it is, yo. You have a kid, God forbid, you have a kid that's thinking that he's a girl, but he's a boy. And God forbid one day he bumps into one of these Democrats. You know what they're going to tell your kid? Transition. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. They're going to keep telling him do it. Why? Why? Why would they push him to do that? Like, fine. You say, okay, you know, you have an option to do this. And then you leave it on the table. Let him decide. But they push, push, push. Why? Because it's demonic. I'm going to show you now how demonic it is because it's out of nature. It's not logical what you're seeing. You understand? That's how you know one million percent. They're demonic. Yo, yo, Democrat, demonic comes from the same root, bro. You got to really use your head to understand who these people are, yo. America last, bro. That's who they are, yo. Always looking to start fights. I told you, Datan and Aviram on steroids. And I told you what their end was. Sinkhole babies died. Yo, what do you don't know, understand? The snake, I told you, the legs, the arms, the tongues, chop, chop. What? You don't get it? For trying to ruin the reputation of God. That's why he got punished so bad. Despised. Look at the punishment. They had to die in the desert. That whole generation died in the desert. Why? Because they spoke bad about the land of Israel. God is already showing you how you have to watch your mouth. Suktum buktum. When your mouth is closed, you can't get in trouble, yo. Don't you get it? If a person lives his whole life, God forbid, and never said a word. But he praised Hashem in his mind. But he never spoke, let's just say. And there was a guy who spoke his whole life and was righteous. Check how many times that righteous person spoke Lashon Hara. Check how many times that righteous person maybe cursed or maybe said something he shouldn't have said or maybe even got mad at God or didn't watch his mouth and didn't realize that there's two gates. The tongue has two gates. 
the lips and the teeth. You understand? It's a double warning to let you know, watch your mouth, yo. So these Democrats, do they watch their mouth? No. Do they ruin people's reputations like the snake? Yes. Do they lie and deceive? Yes. Do they want to see destruction and pretend like they don't? Yes. Are they duplicit? Yes. Are they ugly souls? Yes. Are they demonic? Yes. Do they love God? No. Do they care? No. They care more about illegal immigrants than they do about your own children, yo. Just take a step back the next time you speak to a Democrat and ask them, why do you think that open borders are okay? Some of them will tell you, it's not open. Liars, yo. But if you find one that's honest, that's, you know, with it, like, we want immigrants, we want them to come into the country. You know, what are they going to tell you? No, oh, we have mercy. We want to help them. They're from war torn countries. But then you try to explain to them, okay, but what if just one of them is a terrorist and he slides in because the border's wide open, they're not vetting anybody, you don't see the security risk? Like, you'd have to be one million percent honest and say, you know, I definitely see it. You know, we're wrong on that. I don't understand that policy. You know, that's how a real you. They're never going to say that because they're possessed by a demon. You don't get it, yo. And you know why this demon got permission to enter their soul and destroy them because they're hating on Trump to such a level that they want him dead and swear that they don't like this like this big juke like this I remember one time Nancy Pelosi said she was praying for Trump so Trump goes yeah she was praying that I dropped dead what do you think I don't know yo these people are vicious nasty disgusting and you know it's crazy because I would never talk like this about a human being ever, yo. What do you think? I'm teaching you about the lessons of watching your mouth. So I'm going to go and do the same sin that I'm telling you not to do? Of course not. So what's going on? This is what you call an exception to the rule. Wickedness like this, it's a mitzvah to call it out and to warn you that they're demons. Even to insult them because they insult God. How do they insult God? By telling your daughter to transition. It's making God look like he made a mistake, God forbid. That alone in itself can get you murdered. But yet you continue with your talk. I already told you, God lets the sinner celebrate. <laughs> you better be careful with that, yo. He'll let you celebrate all the way to the top of the mountain, yo. Yell out, I rule the world. <laughs> And some eagle is going to fly by you, scare you, and you're going to fall off the cliff and die. Or actually, you might not even die, yo. You might, God forbid, stay alive just laying there for the next God knows how long Hashem wants. He'll <laughs> send birds to feed you just to keep you alive. Bro, you don't get it, bro. You don't get it, yo. Y'all want to go to war with God? Because that's what y'all doing, yo. Because that's exactly what you guys are doing. You're going to war with God, yo, and you're going to lose that war, just like everybody else before you. And they keep attacking Israel. You don't understand, yo? Wow, we see there's a God, obviously, right? You look at the world the way it's when I remember one guy talking about the Big Bang Theory. I said the Big Bang Theory connotates randomness, that it just happened was a random explosion. How could it be random when you look at the world and everything has order day, night, <laughs> I don't understand. It's all in order. But yet you're saying it's random? So just logic would dictate. Obviously, some every creation has a creator. Now you're going to tell me who created God? Nobody. You know why? Because you don't look at God <laughs> like he's a spiritual, ethereal, divine being. You look at it through your own physical eyes like everything has an expiration date. So in your mind, something has a beginning and an end. But a spirit is not bound by those laws. You understand? The answer is Hashem is the creator of all things, even of the word creation. Ah, that's deep. That's why he's the greatest, yo. That's why he's too powerful. He's too deep to comprehend. He gave us just a taste of his knowledge. And look at the way he loves man, man. He made the whole world for man. The first six days before man was created, everything was prepared for him. 
That's why God made man last. Not because he wasn't higher than the angels, as the angels claim. They started to brag again with the mouth, yo. No, no, we're greater than man. You see, he was created on the sixth day. Right away, Hashem said to them, yeah. Because I wanted everything prepared. Even you are going to serve him, yo. What are you crazy? God is not with the bragging and the boasting. Look, it says, I will break the pride of your arrogance. What do you think that means? Break your pride. That means he's going to humble you. So what does humbling you mean? It means he can, God forbid, kill your kid. It means, God forbid, he can make you beg on the street for food. God forbid, yo. But that's exactly what it means, yo. He did it to those that were greater than you. So he'll do it to you. You understand? A president was already set to show you this is the end. You want to follow the path? Follow it. But don't you dare complain when the justice is served. You have mercy on the wicked? Don't. Have mercy on their victims. You understand? Have mercy on their victims. It's unbelievable that Satan is so clever to make a person have mercy on the wicked, yo. Unbelievable. It's not really, it's nuts when you really think about it, but that's how it is. That's why you have to be stuck to God. That's why your mind has to be filled with the Word of God, because if your mind is filled with the Word of God, you're always going to make the right decision. Oh yeah, you failed to temptation and sin, because you're made of flesh and blood, and God knows that. But right away, you better apologize. Right away, you better say you're sorry. Right away, you better reaffirm who God is and cry from the depths of your soul to forgive you. Or better yet, don't even do the sin. <laughs> don't even do the sin. Right away, put it on a scale. Right away, before you do the sin. Yo, I used to do this when I was starting to get religious and I really got close to God. And I tried to do everything in my power to stop sinning. So that was one of the best things I did, yo. I used to, before I would do a sin, let's say I would go I wanted to date a Goya. Like I met a Goya and I know it's wrong, right? Because back then I was like secular, I didn't care. But then I started to recognize who God was. So now I was like, should I go and chill with this Goya, right? So right away I put it on a scale. So on one side, you know, she's fly, she's hot, she's this, she's that. Fine, so there's going to be pleasure. And, you know, I like her and she's this. And okay, fine. But on the other side, tragedy right away you're going against God right away God forbid you can make a huge huge sin without even knowing it God forbid you could this you could that you know and I start putting everything on the scale it's not worth it yo before you do a sin put it on a scale and ask yourself if it's worth it weigh it out say what are the pros and what are the cons and after you weigh it out and think about it and study it then if you want to do the sin, don't. But at least you could say to Hashem, I put it on a scale. That's not going to work, yo. The bottom line is put it on a scale and don't do it. That's the whole point of putting it on a scale. Then you're going to realize, yo, it's like a guy who cheats on his wife, right? So he has triplets at home, the most beautiful girls in the universe. They're all like yeah, two years old. And he goes out with some girl that he met at work and cheats on his wife. Now, if before he went to go cheat on his wife, you came to him and you told him, look, look at this picture of your babies. They're so beautiful. You're going to risk this for that? Like, just put it on a scale. No matter how much fun you have tonight, right? God forbid you get this girl pregnant. God forbid she has a disease. God forbid this girl. You know, you give him a million excuses, yo. Why it shouldn't go? The temptation is too hot, too strong. The blood is pumping too hard. Word up, yo. That's exactly what it is, yo. But you let him know it's not worth it, yo. To lose your kids, pay alimony, your wife's family's going to hate you. Ah, it's just too many things, yo. After that, you're going to do the sin? Probably not. Probably not, yo. I remember I had this one kid who used to get so mad if somebody, like, bumped into his desk. So I remember one day in front of the whole class, I took him and I said to him, listen... We're doing this just to show you how you have the power to control your emotion. So he said, what do you mean? So I said, look, I'm going to have everybody in the class walk by your desk and bang into it. 
but you're not going to get mad. You know why? Because it's just a test. It's just a test. Imagine you were about to do, you know, get mad, and an angel came to you and said, listen, in three minutes, this guy is going to start honking his horn at you for no reason. So just don't get upset. Just know it's going to go away in three minutes. That's it. Now you're good. Would you be able to pass the test? For sure. Why? Because you're prepared for the test. So I said, yeah, I'm preparing you for a test. So everyone's going to walk by your desk, bump into your desk, but you're not going to get mad. And I told them, I'll give them a prize. I forgot what it was, a football. I got only no so. So all the kids walk, and I can see he's like getting annoyed. And every time he got annoyed, the kids, even the kids, they're so cute. They said to him, Jacob, don't get upset. Don't get upset. It's just a test. It's just a test. So like 20 kids walked by his desk, banged into it. His water bottle fell. This, that, did he get upset? No. Why? Because he was prepared for the test. It's a great secret, yo. Put it on a scale, bro. And I tell that to the Democrats, yo. Before you go and try to destroy Trump and his family, wish harm on him and then pretend and act dumb when something bad happens to him. Now he's okay? And all of a sudden, oh, you're like his best friend? <laughs> no. That's my advice to the Democrats, yo. Put it on a scale. Put it on a scale. You want to destroy his reputation? Think about the snake. You want to murder his family? By throwing them in jail? <laughs> Think about Din Ro death. You're going to chase somebody to murder them? God is going to send somebody to chase you? To murder you? Stop being fake. That's another thing, yo. God hates fake. You know why? Because his name is Emet, the truth. That's one of his many names. So how could he like somebody that's fake? You're literally the opposite of God. Literally. He's the truth and you're a lie. So how are you going to go to heaven? What, are you going to lie your way into heaven? You're going to go to the angel over there that stands at the gate and tell him, No, I was a very righteous person. I did this. I did that. I did that. God, I think those lies are going to work. You should be careful over there, yo. They might grab you by the tongue. Swing you around, yo, like a slingshot. And then met slingshot you, yo. Rashemis. Yo, all these Democrats should be shaking right now. Like they're under attack, yo. They have no idea. The avalanche of destruction that's heading their way. It's like a tsunami's coming and you're so unaware. I know you fell asleep on the beach. Everybody ran, but they couldn't wake you up. They didn't have time. They didn't even realize you were there. And now what? The tsunami's coming and you're gonna get smashed and that could go a lot of different ways you could die instantly you could break off a bit low in both your legs and be half drowning for the next 24 hours yo 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 you don't understand yo you can get a yo a piece of a house pressing you up against a rock where you could just barely breathe, but enough to stay alive, and you're there for three days. Yo, 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 yo. You just think about all the ways Hashem could destroy a person. And why would Hashem destroy a person? You know why? It's not because they just gossip. Hashem understands people gossip. It's wrong, you'll get punished, no problem. It's because they do it in an arrogant way, yo. They're arrogant, they're smug, they're rude, they're inconsiderate, they're discourteous. They just want to destroy, yo. It's unbelievable. I really cannot believe how much they lie on Trump. It's like out of control, yo. It's really not normal, yo. It's demonic, I told you. It's out of nature. It's just nobody can hate somebody that much, yo. And he's not bad, yo. They try to make him like he's so bad. They're vicious, yo. They're like gossiping piranhas, feasting on the blood of the righteous. That's what these people are, yo. I still can't get over what Rachel Maddow said. She said it was a meandering, long-winded, circuitous, sing-song, ding-dong, ping-pong, King Kong. He's all over the place. I mean, she didn't even say that, yo. I just made that up. Because it sounded good, but you get the point, yo. He's tired, he's this, he's rambling. 
They're talking about Joe Biden is incoherent. What is this? They're trying to make these false equivalencies between him and Joe Biden. How disrespectful could you be? Disrespectful not to us, to your base. To your base, but you think the Democratic people that like go vote for you guys are that dumb? I think you do, or else you wouldn't try to feed them this lie, yo. Gonna say he's an anti Semite. Meanwhile, yo, come on, man. His daughter converted, married a Jew, yo. He's an anti Semite. Look, like, like, I don't understand, man. You cannot be that dumb to believe that lie. But yet, there are many of them that do. But shame on you for trying to feed it. And if you're a Democrat, yo, there's no better time to become a Republican than right now. So, why would you not be a Republican? You'll have a safer America. You'll have more prosperity. You'll have more peace. The world will be more at peace. You already see, and it's not, and the beauty is he already showed you. And the way Hashem set it up is so beautiful. You know why? Because Trump already did it. And he's going to do it again and do it better than before. Ah, y'all don't get it, yo. Respect this man. Show appreciation to this man. Any man that will give up his life of luxury. To get involved with these Democrats to go to war for you is a hero, is a righteous man. They might really, like, can you imagine a guy who, like, God forbid, committed adultery, spoke disgusting, was a womanizer, that this guy can be this great? Yes. Hashem is showing you to Donald Trump that you can be from the bottom of the barrel morally and end up being greater than great. I mean, that's really what it is, yo. It's unbelievable, yo. And you know what? It's crazy because he was just bad, like, you know, like with women and stuff like that. But other than that, he's like generous. He's kind of, but that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Like people don't realize, yo, you could be the biggest Sadiq. You couldn't really be that big of a Sadiq if you're like, you know, around strip clubs your whole life, God forbid. You know, you have that kind of lifestyle where you're like your playboy. That's a horrible tag to have. If you died as a playboy, <laughs> and the worst part of your punishment is going to be how they celebrate you in this world, that's going to bring you more pain than ever. That's going to bring you more pain than a punishment. Is the people saying, oh, yo, he was with this girl, that girl. That's going to bring you shame and shaman. That's going to get you mad. That's going to get you frustrated. That's going to bring you hurt. But that's how it goes, yo. The sin is a virus. It's a bacteria, yo. It's disgusting to say it like that. But that's exactly what it could be, yo. Because the more you do the same sin, the more you get infected, the more, God forbid, it will take over your mind. And the more you block it, and the more you fight it, the more confidence you get to know that it only takes but a second of resolve to fight that temptation. The Satan is busy with a lot of people. So he'll come to you for a minute and he'll try to get you to sin. After a minute, you don't do it, he'll leave you alone. But you have to be strong enough to ignore it. But the beauty is you don't even have to go there. All you have to do is keep feeding your mind Torah, more Torah, more Torah, more Torah, more, Torah, more like addicted to the Torah. And then, before the sin even comes, before the temptation even comes, right away, you identify it as a threat. That's what I did as I started to get closer to God, yo. A beautiful woman became a threat to me. That's deep. Now, my wife is different. I'm not married, but if I was, she could be the most beautiful. There's no problem. I can enjoy that beauty all day and night if I wanted to, yo. But pretty women, sexy women, dangerous to me you understand what do i gain from even looking at that nothing nothing get excited it leads to a huge sin why would you want that enjoying her beauty for what you could be enjoying the torah why would you be wasting your time enjoying her beauty when you could be enjoying the beauty of god one disappears one lasts forever you're real chase the one that lasts forever and don't let people get you down, yo. You know, there's a lot of jealousy, a lot of hate, a lot of envy. But don't worry, those things take those people out of this world. So just be patient. And sooner or later, Hashem will make it that you'll never have to deal with them. I love you. 
I come to Jabbar who I cherish you. I value you. I know exactly who you are. I will forever love you. I want to be with you forever. I never want your word to depart from my heart. I want you to be next to me, surrounding me, protecting me, and letting me know it's always going to be okay. Placing peace in my heart with patience, judging your children in the most favorable way I can without bending the truth. Because you must always remember nothing is above the truth. Within the parameters of the truth, everything is fine. But once you leave those parameters and enter the land of lies, now anything is possible. To convince you that God is not real. To convince you that he doesn't reward the righteous and punish the wicked. To convince you that everyone goes to heaven. To convince you that being gay is okay. Don't you get it? Protect me always, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Protect me like you protected the Jews in the desert, with the clouds of glory, with the pillar of fire, and with the man. You know, when I look at the ocean, I feel calm. I feel peace. Ah, that's why Hashem made me speak about the ocean. You want to know one of the biggest miracles in this world? Is if you take water and throw it up in the air, what happens? It separates into little water molecules. Do you understand that when you look at the ocean, that all that water is quadrillions and gazillions of water molecules? It's actually more impressive than the grains of the sand, yo. Like try to count sand. It's impossible. In a handful, you have a trillion. You understand? This is more than that because I would assume that the ocean is much more vast than the sand. Ah, How do they not see your greatness, yo? Just in the water. Just in the water, they see it. How the trees don't touch. <laughs> Go check. The branches, yo, they should be smashing into each other. One makes a left, one makes a right. They communicate to avoid strife. We should learn from the trees how their branches get along. That's deep. I like that. I appreciate that. And because of that, Hashem gave me schut to remember the story of the ragged chover. There was this guy <laughs> named the ragged chover, yo. He was like the tree whisperer. He knew everything about trees. He could look at a tree. I tell you the amount of leaves on the tree. So one day he was walking and this guy came up to him and he said to him, Hey, Rabbi, is it true that you can look at a tree and got the leaves? He said, yes. He said, garbage. So the rabbi said, test me. He said, fine, how many leaves on this tree? So the rabbi looked at it and goes, 6,706. So the guy looked at it and goes, what do you think, I'm a fool? How am I going to prove that? How can I even verify that? What do you think? I'm just going to take your word. I'm not a foe. So the rabbi said, no, I'll prove it to you. Blindfold me and then take as many leaves as you want. I'll look at the tree and I'll tell you how many leaves are in your hand. And then you'll know. So the guy goes, fine. He blindfolds him and then he pretends like he's picking leaves off the tree. So he takes off the blindfold and he says to the ragged chauffeur, how many leaves do I have in the bag? And he has like a bag full of like, I don't know, cotton. So the ragged chauffeur says, none. So the guy said, how did you know? You must have seen that I didn't do anything. He said, no, you don't get it. I look at the tree and I know how many leaves. It's my mash, like the tree whispers to him the amount of leaves it has. Yo. It's so beyond deep, you don't understand. And there was another time that they had these two rows of trees and these two trees at the end were next to each other for like 15 years and they I don't know they did some construction this so they took one of the trees and moved it to the upper row and all of a sudden both trees stopped giving fruit and they didn't understand what's going on you know the owners are looking at it they're like checking to see what's going on it looks like all the other trees but why is it not giving fruit so they called the ragged chauffeur. 
So the ragged trooper went over to one tree, looked at it, went over to another tree, looked at it, and he said to them, you must reunite these trees. So they said, what do you mean reunite these trees? They said, these two trees are reincarnations of best friends that loved each other more than you'll ever know. That's why they're not giving fruit, they're sad. Put them back together. Whatever construction you're doing, rearrange your plans and put them together. And that's what they did. And of course, as you know, they gave the most edible fruit. This is how it goes, yo. You don't, everything is on a very deep esoteric level, yo. Don't look at the world as just some physical materialistic world. It's not. It's a world filled with intelligence, filled with spirituality, filled with morality, but only if you want it. You have such a choice. A girl in the corner dressed like a prostitute or a Torah to sit and study and talk to God. Decide what you want to do. You're going to chase the girl. It's going to end up bad. Because when you do bad things, bad things happen. Got it? Good. But you go to the side of the Torah. And then you understand that you have a purpose in this world. You came to fix what you need to fix. You curse, you better stop with that, yo. Nothing turns me off. I shouldn't say nothing, but that's one of the things that really this pleases me especially when i hear a mother of children curse like that really you know what and i have to admit there's a lot of women that i heard curse that i told them like yo you're too classy to talk like that you know and i said it in such a nice way with love you know like one day like she was my mother my mother would never curse thank god you've never heard my mother curse one time raise your hand if you could say that about your mom i don't think so bro i mean obviously there will be but the majority, I believe, would not raise their hand. Really, the best reason why you should never curse is because you can never get into heaven if you curse. For that alone, right there, what I just told you should make you stop cursing for the rest of your life. Amen. I hope it happens. Today, I see this dude smoking a cigarette. He doesn't even speak English, yo. So I came up to him and I said to him, and I had to speak slow with like some words I used in Spanish. But I basically told him, yo, just like you can take this cigarette and put it to your mouth and smoke, you can also reverse the action and know that you hold the power to put the cigarette back down and not smoke. So I remember he looked at me and I could see in his eyes, yo, that he 1 billion percent understood the depth and the breadth of that comment. And that made me feel great, yo. I love, I love helping people like Kaddish Baruch Hu, like you do. I learned from you. I learned from you, Kaddish Baruch Hu, how you clothed Adam and Eve, how you visited Abraham, how you showed up to Moshe Rabbeinu, descended in a cloud to go speak to Moshe Rabbeinu at the communion tent. That's beautiful. He's going to lower himself to hurt, to mingle with man. Yeah. yeah, if that man is Moshe Rabbeinu, he will. If it's you, probably not, yo. But don't worry, you can also get to the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. But just remember that a humble person never gets insulted. So that you gotta put to the side. Can I get angry? Can I get upset? And even Moshe Rabbeinu was the most humble man that ever lived. If he got upset, <laughs> then you can only imagine what an egotistical person is going to do. He's going to go crazy when he doesn't get his way. When somebody accuses him of stealing and he didn't. <laughs> but you didn't even steal. Why are you getting him? No, because it's the principle of it. Nah, because you want to get mad. Because you don't trust God enough. You got insulted. It's okay. It's fine. It happens. But a humble person would never get insulted. Moshe Rabbeinu had the Torah named after him. Do you even know? Yeah, come on, man. Torah Moshe. You don't get it, bro. You don't get this is a giant. You thought Og was a giant? <laughs> this is one of the biggest human giants that ever lived. Always there for his nation. Ready to get a race from the book. Wow, 
I like that, and I should love that. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu said, erase me from your book. <laughs> you would think that Hashem would get mad and get ready to smash him, the opposite. Hashem loved the way he loved his children, yo. That's what made him love Moshe Rabbeinu. And may we have the merit to love you the same. To help, to uplift, to encourage, to motivate, to love. I love you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I will always love you. Forever and for always. Love you, Hashem. Thank you.